let us call to order at this time the regular meeting of June 16th, 2020, the Harris County Board of Education. At this time, I ask everyone to stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We have one special recognition and presentation this evening, and that would be... All right, uh, at this time, we have our councilman, uh, city, Clarksburg City Councilman Jim Bamford Joe with us this evening. Would you like to come forward? You may, yes. Welcome this evening. I'm here on behalf of a request by Dr. Manson to talk to you all about the survivor tree and the uh, first responder park that we have next door. A little history behind it. Uh, it's probably been about four years. Um, I was on vacation and um, came came upon uh, an I-beam on, uh, on the boardwalk in Ocean City and something came over me that I, you know, had to do something for the city of Clarksburg. So. I'll, I'll make this brief. You know, I, when I got back to Clarksburg, I sat down, wrote a letter, sent it to Mayor de Blasio in New York, requesting, you know, an I beam. Never heard anything. So, two months later, I contacted Senator Manchin and, and, and told, you know, the Senator what I was wanting to do. And, you know, he said, let me make some phone calls. Well, you know, months went by. And uh, we come to find out that, uh, you know, we got no response. So, Senator Manchin. Uh, turned some of his people in Washington, D.C. over to try to find us an I-beam. Well, there, there's none to be had, um, so um, they came up with Survivor Tree. And what this is, is, is it's a calorie pear tree that was buried under the World Trade Centers. Uh, after they removed the debris, they uprooted this root, took it back to the New York City parks, and they revived this tree. Well, they give out three trees a year. You know, they give it to Haiti, to different countries that have had disasters. So when, um, um, after a lot of begging and pleading, they contacted me and asked me why, you know, Clarksburg, West Virginia should have, you know, this, this tree. And I said, well, we've lost, since 1930s, we've lost 2,876 miners. And they said, say no more. So... Um, um, the, the tree is, if, if you're not all, all familiar with it, it is out there. It was brought to town uh, last June. Uh, it is a national treasure. I mean, it is, they don't just give these trees to anybody. So what I want to do is, is uh, the project was in two phases. And what I want to do, what I want to do is phase one was completely uh, financed by Al Shope and Antero Resources. The total project is $77,000. Um, you know, Mr. Shope and Antero, you know, gave us $22,000. So phase two is I want to erect a life-size statue of a policeman, a fireman, and an EMS worker in full regalia. And these statues run about $15,000 a piece. Well, I, you know, I'm $35,000 short of, of, of my project. And I just wanted to bring this, uh, you know, Senator Man or Dr. Manson said, you know, I, you know, I want you to bring this before uh, the board tonight. And, um, and everything in here, there's a schematic that shows, um, you know, where everything will be placed. Uh, there's a story, here's a letter that was sent out to all prospective uh, donors, a breakdown of, of the cost. And then there's stories about the survivor tree and, and, and how they, you know, re-erected it and, and brought it back to life. So, um, you know, I'm just here this evening to pitch to see if the Board of Education would like to make a donation. And, and, and I certainly would like to thank you for the, the donation of the, uh, of the area out here that, you know, now, ha now ha houses the, uh, the uh, survivor tree. Any questions? 
No, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Malfichuk? No. I think this is uh, I think this is pretty impressive, actually. Um, I know you've had some ceremonies out there, and, and I've seen the ceremonies in the past, and I think that what, what you've done is really, really impressive. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I have one question. Sure. Um, it says that the property is owned by the city of Clarksburg. Pardon me? It, it says on here the property is owned by, not that it really matters, but I'm just trying to figure out where this is. Is it? In the courtyard. It's in the courtyard out here. Your courtyard. Actually, it's right it's next to It's a board of education. Mm -hmm. oh. It's right out here. That's what I thought. Yeah. Your plan, whoever did this, they have it owned by the city of Clarksburg. That's why yeah. I got confused. I thought yeah. that's where you were meeting. Yeah. It's, the, it's the courtyard. The tree is already there. Yeah. And, and we had talked about, uh, I, I think he's got, we already have people who, who put electricity out there. Yeah. Uh, we're, elect, we're erecting flagpoles. Uh, flagpoles, uh, United States flag, West Virginia flag, and the city of Clarksburg. Yes, sir. Uh, the three life-size uh, statues. Right. I, uh, are they bronze or what are they? Uh, yes, they'll be bronze. They're bronze. and they're. I mean, they're. You know, they're. They, they have and to be picked and up and lowered by a crane. You know, they're. Uh, they're. You know, fifteen thousand dollars worth of brass. And did I understand bronze. that you'll have a, a plaque or something to everybody who donates? Uh, yeah, everyone that donates is um, McNear, Highland, McMunn, and Varner before they dissolved donated uh, slabs of marble, which um, um, Bad Lizard John at Bad Lizard is going to engrave with everybody that's made a donation. So they'll, they'll be here permanently. I mean, they'll be here long after we're all gone. And it'll be lit, and uh, I think it's a real neat thing. And it, it, well, thank you. I, I do too, don't get me wrong, I just got confused. Yeah, I, 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 that, that might be, I, you know, I didn't even catch that as a typographical it's, error. It's like the very top line, and I thought, is this the second place is all, I mean, yeah, I was just. I'll find it eventually. It's on the map. Right. Yeah. Site development notes. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I just thought maybe there was going to be a second one, like on the other corner. That's that was the only reason. I think it's a, be a wonderful idea. Yeah, I would see if we can work something out together. Mm -hmm. See if there's okay. a possibility for us. Right. I'll talk. Uh, yeah. I'll see what the desire of the board is, uh, Jimmy. But, okay. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing. And, and Thanks for your and time, folks. Making this happen. Thank Absolutely. you for coming this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next special recognition and presentation is for the Harrison County Education Association Scholarship Awards. Uh, so each year, the Harrison County Education Association awards two scholarships to graduating seniors uh, whose parents are members of the association. Applicants are asked to write, I'll, I'll let you explain, Ryan. You can come oh. forward. Yeah, you can explain. Should I get the microphone? Yes, please. Good evening. My name is Ryan Deems. I am the president of the Harrison County Education Association. Um, every year, we, uh, as an organization, uh, hold a scholarship contest. We have an essay, um, an essay contest uh, that is open to any graduating senior who has a parent who is a member of the Harrison County Educa Education Association. Uh, Previously, last year, we gave two awards, um, each totaling $750. Um, with the rising cost of uh, college higher education and uh, the quality of applicants that we were receiving, we made room in our budget to raise the value of each award to $1,000. So. We are giving away $2,000 this year. Um, and our two winners are Veronica Archer uh, from Bridgeport High School and Drake Loss from Lincoln High School. Uh, please come up. Your families can come up.
Congratulations. Thank you to the board for letting your students. And no problem. We thought it was important to do the board meetings and give these great seniors um, some recognition that they've, that they've lost from the COVID-19. So thank you. Where are they going to go to school? And what are you going to study? Sister, Dr. Nude. Oh, that's got to be recruiting. All right, all right. Yeah, got to be recruiting. Got to be recruiting, though. Got to be recruiting. Well, if you all, it doesn't work out, uh, come on down to Glenville. I'll take care of you. Don't you worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next, uh, next up we have delegations this evening. And I would like to read a statement before we begin the delegations. This is a notice to all speakers who appear before the Harrison County Board of Education. Speakers before the Harrison County Board of Education are asked to express themselves in a civil manner at all times with due respect for dignity and privacy of others who may be affected by the content of your comments. This is a public notice that all meetings of the school board are audio taped and most regular meetings are videotaped to be televised later on Time Warner Public Access Channel 18. While it is not the intent of the Harrison County Board of Education to ever stifle public input into our deliberations, all speakers should be aware that if your public comments made here today violate the rights of any other person, especially under the laws of defamation or invasion of privacy, you may be held legally and individually responsible. If you are unsure of the factual nature of any claim, comment, or allegation you are about to make, the Harrison County Board of Education strongly encourages you to consult first with your legal counsel. Each speaker will have five minutes, and I will be, I will be watching the clock pretty closely tonight. Our first speaker is, I believe, Rebecca Henry. Good evening. Get my notes up here real quick. Hi, my name is Rebecca Henry. I live in Harrison County and am the mother of four small children, three of which are hoping to attend school this fall. I am not here though to talk about myself tonight or about my situation because I am in the minority. I have the privilege to be a stay at home mom. I have the financial ability to seek other forms of education for my children. I own a vehicle. I have a driver's license. I have people who babysit my kids for free from time to time. I have the ability to provide internet and the equipment for my children to take online schooling if necessary. In a perfect world, I think the changes that everybody has been talking about would be doable. But um, tonight I would like to talk about the majority of children in the school system. The ones whose parents both need to work full time, or even, unfortunately, more commonly, the children with one parent. The ones who have no reliable access to internet. The ones who are depending on sports and other extracurriculars for their future. The ones whose parents are on drugs. The ones whose school is their safe harbor the children whose schools may be the closest thing they have to home. Um, evidently, there are 10,000 homeless children in the West Virginia public school system. I wasn't aware of that. Um, this does not include foster children either, the 10,000 homeless children. These are the children I want to speak for, some of whom I know personally, because frankly, many of them can't speak for themselves. Um, I hope you can indulge me for a few minutes and engage in some critical thinking about the proposed safety measures, specifically masks and a four-day work week, um, or school week, I'm sorry. How will four days of school make our children safer when they will no doubt be at each other's houses or hanging out on the fifth day? Also, how will younger children who are learning phonics and learning new concepts be able to learn these things from someone wearing a mask? How will they communicate? Two of my children are naturally shy, for whom wearing a mask would only make it harder for them to communicate. 
Also, I am wondering how we can expect our teachers of the younger grades to nurture and teach when they're trying to communicate through a mask and enforce a slew of new rules, most of which go against the very nature of children. I know you all have a lot of pressure on you. I want you to know that I do not expect you to be perfect or have the perfect solution to all this. Um, I hope nobody is expecting that. I'm asking that you and all of us as parents and teachers and board members consider what is best for the majority of these children and put their needs first. I know there cannot be a one size fit all solution to this situation, um, but I'm asking that the minority be the ones that find an alternative instead of the majority. Um, that we do not leave hundreds, maybe thousands of children behind in an overly cautious attempt to ease people's fears. Um, I was wondering if the board had considered letting the parents sign waivers to send their children back to school. Um, I believe, I don't think that this is too far-fetched, that it should be our choice whether we send our children to school or not. Um, not the board's decision whether they will provide the necessary education. Um, this is some information that I found. Um, when asked if there was any data saying that these measures make a difference in the transmission State Superintendent of the Schools, Clayton Birch, replied, quote, this plan is overly cautious. I'm agreeing with you that it is overly, overly cautious. Um, in fact, I think this plan is not even considering the data, I'm sorry, that was the end of the quote. Um, in fact, this plan is not even considering the data we have now. A review by Stanford medical professor found that for most people under the age of 65, the risk of dying from COVID-19 isn't much higher than from getting in a car accident driving to work. Children under the age of 14 are between 6.8 and 17 times less likely to die of COVID-19 than they are of the flu, which has never been treated like this. Um, there are 2,002 people who were tested last week or two weeks ago now in West Virginia, specifically targeting vulnerable areas. 100% of those tests came back negative. This is relevant information that should bear weight. So um, I'm just wondering what we are being overly cautious about. A fear that this virus may return? A fear of the unknown? Um, are we willing to sacrifice our children's educations over a fear? I believe the people of West Virginia are strong and brave people, and I believe we are better than that. Also, one last idea. I know it has been said that the schools will be closed on the fifth day for heavier sanitizing. I think we can find a way to keep our schools open for full time. I was wondering if parents could help sanitize on the weekend. I'd be more than willing to help. Your time. Please finish your comment. Gotcha. Um, so I was just proposing that we sign waivers. We, uh, the parents help sanitize and that those who are healthy, sick children stay home and those who are healthy have a five day school week with all extracurricular activities resumed. Please open our schools. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Lacey Morris. Hi again. <laughs> I'm back for a second time. Um, as I think I told most of you last time, I'm a mom of four boys. Um, two are 16. They're going to be juniors. They both took their ACTs um, on Saturday, so we're hoping. <laughs> comes back good, um, and a nine-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, as Becca said, um, the implications for working parents, um, I don't know if that has been fully considered. Um, right now, I am a stay-at-home mom, but I do a lot of freelance writing, and it's very difficult for me to do my work <laughs> with my children there all of the time. Um, you know, it's our very society is based right now on the five-day school system and the way things um were and to make all of those changes such radical changes i feel like we should have a legislative process to do that that it can't just be decided by just a few people um there's no difference to me between four days and five days all of those kids are going to be seeing each other they're going to be going to daycare on the um you know the fifth day if daycares will even allow us to send our children to a daycare because you know, um, before when I had to send my children to daycare, you couldn't just do one day a week. Um, you had to pay for an entire week. Um, that places an unnecessary financial burden on us as parents, and it makes it very difficult for us. 
um, you know, an idea would be instead of doing four days and having one day off for disinfecting to, I think as Becca mentioned, to disinfect at night and on weekends instead so we could have the five days. Um, I had, uh, this weekend we went to Thomas with um, some of our friends from Richmond, Virginia, and she is a special education teacher there. And she was telling me that um, they're not requiring in Virginia um, any kids under 10 to wear masks, that in Virginia they think it's not feasible for children under 10 to wear masks, so they're not actually doing that in Virginia. So something to consider, because I know something we were talking about here was children two and above wearing masks in Virginia. Um, from my friend has said that they are it's just too much of a burden for kids under 10. Um, coronavirus will never be 100% eradicated. It's, it's never gonna be completely wiped out. We're gonna have to, you know, it's just a reality. And, uh, you know, the statistics show it's not nearly as fatal and um, as serious as we once thought. You know, during the first few weeks of this, we all weren't sure, but the data is clear now that it's, it's not nearly as, um, it's not nearly as dangerous, especially to children, as we thought. Um, mental health matters. Um, I have a lot of boys because I have the 16-year-olds at my house a lot. I have a lot of other boys that come to my house. Uh, one has a single mom. She works two jobs. She works at Applebee's and she works um, in another place. And um, a lot of the times her son comes to our house um, to make sure that he's not home alone. And he hasn't been at my house for a few weeks, and he finally was able to come this week. And you know, he cried when he he saw us because he's not with us. His grades were failing. He's not doing well. Um, you know, he needs he needs the support of his school system. His his mom is you know his mom was not doing well either. As far as extracurriculars, obviously, I think they're very important. I have two boys that are going to be juniors. Um, the junior year is very important for um, recruitment. Um, one of my boys doesn't want to play football in college, but the other one does. The only way he's going to college is if he plays football in college, and he's a very good athlete. Um, I'm doing all I can. You know, I got him to take his ACT. He's, he's very smart. Um, he comes from not a great background, and, um, you know, I'm doing all I can for him to help him succeed, but he needs those extracurriculars. They're very important to him, and, um, you know, to, to all of the boys as well. The, the football players at RCB, are working very hard. They're doing volunteer work in the area, like they care about the school and the community, and um, they're working and they're building their leadership skills. So extracurriculars are extremely important um, for for these boys. To some of them, it's honestly it's more important than the academics because um, you know that's that's just how some kids are. But um, my um, again, going off of what Becca said, I would prefer that we get rid of the color coded chart that we do what we do during the flu season. We do more disinfecting, hand washing training for the staff and for the children ongoing, um, <coughs> teaching them you know, the importance of hand washing, working with that. Um, if kids and teachers are sick, they should stay home. We should have a more lenient sick policy um, so that way kids that are sick will actually stay home and they, the parents won't be penalized for that. Make masks optional. If you wanna wear a mask, you can wear a mask. If not, then it's, it's optional and a waiver for COVID. You know, we sign waivers for all kinds of things, for football, for everything. We can sign a waiver for this if we um, feel it's, as as you're at your time. If, if we feel that um, it's safe to send our kids to school. So, thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is Jill Singleton. Hello, my name is Jill Singleton. I have two sons in the Harrison County school system. And I am one of those families. I am one of those families. I pay these healthcare workers that are on the front lines and my husband keeps the gas flowing to your all's homes. And you know, we were working out of our homes during this whole virtual schooling. I have a eight year old with an IEP. He needs stability. He needs in his normal learning environment to thrive. He needs this, his supports he gets at school. I mean, we just can't, he is with my 80 year old in-laws that do not have internet. We live down a country road. We don't have stable internet and his grade got cut because one of his assignments didn't get in his library grade, not even a core class. And you know, I can't do this virtual schooling anymore. At five hours a night after I get home working an eight hour shift is not working for my family. It has been pure 
torture. Getting him to sit down once his, he has ADHD, his medicines are wore off by five o'clock in the afternoon, and he does not focus, it's kicking, it's screaming, it's yummy, and then we're sitting at the dinner table. Well, what do your kids associate with sitting at the dinner table? Eating, not learning. So, you know what I mean? We, I need my kids back in that building. They need the stability, he's not getting his services, you know, I'm not gonna medicate my kid more so, you know, he can learn at night. You know what I mean? After I'm already exhausted from working an eight hour day. And, you know, and how are the teachers accurately, truly measuring our kids' academic abilities virtually? How are they? Can anybody explain that to me? Because every home life is different. So how can you say that this D Johnny made because, you know, he didn't have food or his parents were tired and didn't want to deal with it that night or, or what to help him? I mean, we got no, I say this, um, we got no quick responses when we were emailing teachers about information or help we needed help and then by that time my ADHD kid he was gone you know what I mean I was like well we can't do anymore so we got to wait for the teacher to respond and five o'clock the next day or eight o'clock that evening you know what I mean I can't get him back to focusing it's time for another round of medicines to get him to go to sleep and uh, you know so I, I my kids need the stability you know if I know there's not a fit all for every family, but maybe get some options available. You know, and I'm another one that I'm gonna have to pay a week's worth of daycare for one day. And right now, my 80 year old in laws are watching my kid. You know, when, the, when school came out, they don't have internet. My internet's crap. So, I mean, you've gotta come up with something, some options because not everything's gonna be perfect for everybody. And it, you know what I mean? And honestly, number one is survival. Number one is I need my job after all this virtual crap is gone because I need to feed my family, I need to clothe my family, and I need to house my family. So, you know what I mean? The, this whole virtual thing, it felt like you all were just shoving it down our throats and I was doing the best I could. And um, it was hard, it was a nightmare. It was pure hell. So, if, you know, I hope you all have done a lessons learned on this virtual schooling, you know, because, you know, one teacher says it's okay to turn it in late, another teacher said it wasn't okay, and, you know, can we get rid of all the, the library and the gym and all this other stuff and just focus on our core classes and, you know, do what you can do as a parent. I'm not a teacher. He's not in his normal learning environment. So what's the success rate for this? Especially you add the ADHD in there too. So I just hope you've done a lessons learned before you all decide what you're gonna do with next year. And I am 100% going back to school because that's the only way my kid's gonna succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Typically, we don't allow these interactions between the... I, no, I don't want to interact, but that is something that not only is in the paper, but if grades are... Because I was very adamant, and it was in the paper that grades were not going to be dropped because of this COVID, especially something like library, mm -hmm. unless it went to through several approvals, including Dr. Manchin's mm -hmm. desk. And I would like to get her name and have that checked because it was in the paper and it's something that I came in this office many times about with this. Okay, I would recommend that Dr. Manchin get with Mrs. Singleton and uh, find out what the situation was. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is Jenna Williams. The only reason she didn't cut it is because I mentioned, you know, he does have an IEP. He did, does get extended time on work, but you know I mean? They were not going to let that go. I mean, it was, if you would give us, a, just leave She'll your give name us her information. so he can look yes. into it. Thank oh, you. Uh, I'll get that information. Uh, Jenna Williams. Is Jenna Williams here? What's up, 
it down because I think it'd be weird to talk with it. Anyway, um, I just wanted to come tonight and let you guys know that I know that the board, um, central office, and teachers have been working together very hard on reentry plans, and um, we have parents that are involved in that process as well. And I just want to thank you guys and let you know that I appreciate all of the work that you're doing for that. Um, my daughter has a heart defect, and I'm as scared as I can be to send her back to school. Um, we can say that we can say that the the statistics are not as high as say the flu or anything like that. But when my daughter goes into the hospital and she doesn't come out, what are we going to do? There's no waiver that I can sign that's going to ease my mind about that. And I'm a special education teacher. I empathize completely with everything they just said. I spent hours trying to teach my own children and to respond to parents that were having trouble. I teach in Lumberport. These kids in Wallace, they don't have internet. That is a huge problem. I'm, I'm in 100 thousand percent in agreement with that. I don't know what the answer is to that. But I know that I have the majority of my students that go home to grandparents every single night that are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. What happens, God forbid, what happens if a kid goes home and gives it to their grandparents? We think we have a foster care problem now. Wait till our grandparents start dropping. I mean, that, I'm really concerned about that. I really am. And um, I, I think that we need technology for our kids. We need, we need to invest in the technology and the internet. I don't know how we can do that. I know that Doddridge County is doing some things, but they have a lot more money than we do. I don't know what the answers are. I don't have all the answers. But I know that we have kids in this county who have severe medical concerns. And their parents are scared to death to send them back to school because it may not happen to a lot of them, but when it happens to one of them, and if it's yours, what are you gonna do? Say I had to send them to school when it wasn't safe? There was an outbreak in Bridgeport over the last two weeks from an event of 200 people. A graduation in this county from a private school had to be canceled because there was a sleepover at a home the night before and people were exposed to COVID. It's here, it's not going away, it's here. And I don't, I'm not saying that we can't go back to school until there's a vaccine, I don't know what the answer is. But I think that if we start seeing re, uh, test results coming back, that we should be able to make fluid decisions that are in the best interest of our students and our um, teachers and, and everybody because the kids take it home. The parents take it home. We have elderly teachers. What happens if they all start calling off because they're sick or they're afraid? We can't get subs now. Nobody wants to come in and sub and they are especially not going to want to come in and sub if they feel like that their health is going to be jeopardized. So um, I don't know. I just I appreciate all the work that you are doing and the input that you're taking from people. I appreciate that you let all of us come regardless if we're on the same side or if we're not because we all have the right to say the way that we feel. Um, so that's all I have. Sorry, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next we have Tammy Reed. Good evening, thank you for this opportunity. I am a mother and I work in the healthcare system and I'm also an adoptive foster parent. So my kids have an opportunity here because I am on them. I'm parenting them, I'm giving them attention. What they get in schools, I can't say enough about my teachers. I had a great experience, not with what I would choose and we were up till nine or 10 or 11 o'clock at night, but they need the attention, they need to be in school. My kids didn't have a good beginning, but they will have a different ending because they're with me. But there's many children out there that don't have anyone overseeing them. I can't share certain information, but there are a lot of parents that are on drugs, especially right here in Clarksburg, and we know that. And these kids, their parents don't care if they eat. We're sending them food. 
But how are they going to get the education that we're going to do virtually? They don't get it. And if they're going to have a chance, if our future is going to have a chance, these kids, they need school. They need their teachers. My teachers are awesome. I can't do that. I can't. Um, I'm a social worker, and I know and I've heard and of the overdoses, the money that's going out there. They're not, sending it on, they're not spending it on their kids. They're using it otherwise. We need the kids in school. So these counselors, these teachers, they are their advocates. They are the ones that make a difference for these kids in their future. And I, I send my kids to daycare. So if we don't go to school on Friday, I have a four-year-old that will be in preschool. I have a um, six-year-old that, by the way, she wanted me to tell you, please send me back to school. And that's going in second grade. And I have a 10-year-old that will be going in fifth grade. I send them to three different classrooms at daycare. So we're going to send them to daycare. And then Monday, after we clean the schools, they're going to go back into the schools and be subjected to all those um, children at daycare and then going back into the school. So if we don't know how long it lasts and we don't know all of this, I think there are, I, I'm not totally against masks. Uh, you know, I believe I'll take measures in order to get my kids back into the school system. Um, my children go to dance class. They wear a, da a mask. I um, teach exercise. If we have to go to limited, give options. Some people, a daughter, you know, if she is um, immune compromised, let her do virtual. Set up the um, screen and let the teacher that's teaching the kids there teach also the kids um, otherwise. Or the teachers that are compromised or older, let them teach the online um, classes and let the other. Give options. We know mental health, one of the number one treatments for substance abuse is exercise. It's exercise. I was raised by a single mother. I got into things that I should have never got into because I had idle time on my hands. If these kids, these older kids, I don't have older kids right now, but have idle time on their hands, what are they going to get into? I, I mean, they're not going to stay home and play by the rules. My mom was a single mom. I had time on my hands. I got into things. Was I supposed to? No. But I'm just saying we need school. School is wonderful. It provides so much structure, support to our system and our next generation. We're already behind the learning curve, and this is even going to slow us down more. So I'm just asking for options. I don't have, I have friends that are immune compromised, and I pray for them. And I don't have the answers for them, but I, I don't think that my children shouldn't be able to go to school and have that opportunity, the same opportunity that I had, that's going to make a difference in their life. My son is ADHD, and he does need that structure. My youngest one, there's no doubt in my mind that we will run the same course with that. But the teachers and what they get there is so much more than I, what I can give them. And I will tell you, with a four-year-old running around trying to teach class with a um, I had to go to work. My husband was able to work at home, thank God. There, there was just no way. We had to do it when we got home. So I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for what you're doing. I know there's not a um, fix for it all, but we all had to come together and try a couple options, not one option. And I don't believe not going to school on Friday is going to be a good option when you're sending all these kids to daycare. My kids are going to daycare and have went to daycare since May 18th. They, were, they returned. Thank you. Beth Carter. Hi again, thanks for having me back. Um, I waved at all my new friends. Um, I just, um, I can't really follow what these ladies have said. There's just no arguing with hearts from moms. I just wanted to talk again about the difference. Um, I talked last time about the difference the Harrison County School System made in my life and how to this day I have, I carry with me the wisdom from teachers. Um, and I talked about how the light fell from my daughter week after week as she couldn't return to school. And I got to thinking that this is true for probably every child in Harrison County, that the light, um, the light that is in my child and probably, I think they said 11,000 children in the county, so 10,999 other children in the county <laughs> is put there by every single person that chooses to pour into their life. Most of the time that's good, but a lot of it comes from school. 
Make sure that schools are gathering places for more than just children, teachers, and staff. Consider them gather places of ideas, passion, and energy. Each of these attributes brings to mind the light in the way that light spreads. Children grow their ideas from heartfelt instruction of teachers and gentle encouragement from staff. Day by day, year after year, throughout their time as a Harrison County student, their lights grow. Each day when they leave their school, their little bits of light travel with them. Over time, these little bits of life build for them an important foundation and cement them into the fabric of a community, whether they stay in Clarksburg, whether they move to a different county or a different state. I'm just one that happened to be able to stay here and stay home. Again, I spoke of the light draining from my daughter. We are still living under that cloud at home. School is over. She got her report card. She's very happy. Um, she did put in a lot of work. It was hard for me. She's a rising ninth grader, and I work full time, and it was still hard for me to provide education for her. I'm in support of going back to traditional school. And as these ladies have spoken about, including this t um, teacher, and I'm sorry, I forget your name, there, need to be an op there needs to be a doable option for children who are medically fragile um, or for children who have a fever and might be sick with strep throat and can't come to school. I know that I don't send my daughter to the doctor, you know, with a 99 fever, but I don't want to send her to school. And parent notes run out very quickly. Um, so I think that's an option. And again, I want to talk that I just want to express that even though she's happy with the end of school, even though we're happy to have summer and things are kind of returning to normal, there's still this cloud hanging over a darkness because we don't know what to expect. Maybe that's not just my family, but school is always something that she looked forward to and that she loves dearly. And I think there's, there will be ways that we can accommodate everyone. Um, and there was even breaking news today about a therapeutic drug that is inexpensive and readily available to treat patients who are dying from COVID. And it's for children and adults both. So again, thank you for having me. I just wanted to speak again from my personal experience and how I believe that's so important for all of our kids here in the county. And um, I will fight, I will fight for what's best for my daughter um, to the nail, like not in the school system, but you know, just through her whole life as parents do. Um, and I hope she can learn that same thing, especially from her time in school. So thank you so much for having us. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> and last we have Sonia Reinhardt. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can talk through this. I have a big mouth. So, um, my name is Tanya Reinhardt. I'm a mom in Harrison County. I have three um, children. One is a fifth grader who didn't get to take his patrol trip this year and will go into middle school having no closure in elementary school. Um, the other will be a fourth grader. And my youngest will start pre K next year. So, um, I am also a teacher, and I'm also vice president of AFT Harrison. It has been a very difficult two and a half months. Um, I have been on this side. I have fought with my kids. I, I have my middle one. This, is, this was not her jam, virtual learning. And I, I think that especially coming off last year's fight against um, charter schools and privatization, you know, we can all, I think, and hope now agree that virtual learning is not ideal. Um, it was not the way that my kids learned the best. Um, it was supposed to be something that they could do mostly with independence. Um, so at the same time, and, and, and we live in Bridgeport, so we have probably one of the better cases as far on paper as being able to handle the situation. Um, we had devices. I mean, my kids are working. I'm on a device trying to do my work, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, the issue with grades, I mean, we, as a parent, I did have to make some decisions for my family to say, this is what we can handle. This is what we are going to do. And we found our groove only then to later on as it came time for grades and things like that, stresses came <clears throat> in when certain things that I had decided for my family, you know, weren't, um, 
necessarily deemed maybe adequate. But at the same time, teachers were feeling an immense strain to do what they were being asked to do. So this whole time, I've had a foot in both camps. And it has not been easy on you all. It has not been easy on school personnel. It has not been easy on community members and families. And no one is taking that away from, from anyone. I don't think anyone wants to walk into August um, when our students are supposed to come back in the same situation. But at the same time, we absolutely have to keep um, the safety and health of our students and communities at the forefront of what we do. And I appreciate that you all, along with um, some of the committees for elementary, middle, and high that have been working, I appreciate that different voices are at the table um, to make that plan look as best it can. And it's a plan. It's not a, this is absolutely how we are doing it. Because as we're seeing, you know, Gina um, was commenting, you know, we're seeing more cases, more positive cases here. We've got 21 states that are upticking in the amount of cases as we're reopening. Some never had stay at home orders at all, but we're starting to see an, a, a scary amount of trending upwards, meaning like some of the capacity for hospitals with their ventilators, things like that, they're starting to see that they're kind of at capacity. Um, so, you know, Gina also talked about that we have um, a lot of grandparents raising our children. We have, we're in the top 10 in the country of states that grandparents are raising their children. Um, so, you know, that's certainly, you know, what Gina commented on, that certainly has to be um, considered. You know, we, we talk about this four day um, idea of cleaning and I, I didn't get to everything I wanted to share, but because public schools have been put on the back burner for so long that we have a hard time getting custodians just during the day, let alone getting them on weekends and overnight to come in and do the kind of cleaning that's gonna be required um, to keep our schools deeply cleaned. And we also have kids that come sick to school. Their parents send them to school. They're not gonna do temperature checks and say, hey, I think my kid could have COVID, so I'm not gonna send them today. They send them regardless now. And then kids will get to school and remain sick or get sicker and we'll call families and the kid will sit there, sometimes for hours, and not be picked up at all to take home. So they're sitting there continuing to infect potentially other people in the building. Um, you have, you're, you're at your time. Okay. If you have a final comment, go ahead. All right, no, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you all for coming this evening. We appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Our next item on the agenda is superintendent's update. Uh, Mr. President, we have a couple of things uh, quickly. Uh, Dr. Haig, I think, has some things uh, that she wants to, to mention that are critical. Uh, just that uh, report cards, of course, um, are being mailed as we speak. They are, are they in receipt of the? Uh, I've gotten, uh, I've gotten all two. All will be by the 17th. Two. We've been mailing them and yeah, they've been coming I'm, in. Yeah, so that's everybody what I will have theirs by um, the 17th of June. Um, we've uh, continued to do some task testing um, to get those last minute graduates um, in so that we can work on that graduation rate. And um, we, really, we have really high numbers of credit recovery. Um, we had the, um, we're running the summer programs of credit recovery um, in three of our fever areas. Um, and we have coordinators doing that virtually. And then we had good participation in credit recovery during the COVID. Um, Connie Buffy ran that out of RCD. Um, so we had uh, about 50 students that recovered at least one course from that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, so. Give me on, on, on so you have your, yeah. give me an update on. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, the uh, CEFT, we're going to have our open um, meeting to the public. We have that scheduled. As a matter of fact, we're working with Christina Gothard to get the, the advertisement in a paper. Uh, we're, we're looking at the 29th of June at Robert C. Byrd at 6, six o'clock. Uh, we're going to limit capacity, but work with the health department to see if we can increase that, but also work with Todd from the team to be able to offer uh, you know, people to come in to the meeting virtually. Um, so 
then we, we have a second meeting uh, scheduled before the Board of Education regular meeting on July the 7th. What we were hoping is at 530 we have that, that hearing. Um, and, and of course we need to record a lot of the, the dialogue that we receive from the, um, from the public. And then we're hoping to get that on the agenda to possibly get it uh, approved by the board and then move on <coughs> to the next step through the state. Okay. Very good. Uh, the South Harrison yeah. project for Lost Creek, uh, all the bid documents have been approved. And uh, so we're going to see some things opening up. Joe and I met today, discussed timelines, and I met with Dr. Manchin. But I, I believe that uh, we're going to get those things out. And I met with uh, Dora as well. But uh, to get those things out to bid and, and hopefully break ground, maybe within six, eight weeks. Great. Uh, and then we're, we're looking at getting the schematic together uh, and to the SBA soon. So Tom's been working with Joe and I. They've been on site uh, looking at a couple different options. So uh, we'll now you're talking about the Gore project. The Gore project. Yeah. What did I call it? No, well, you didn't specify. <laughs> no, but uh, we're here. Yeah. I knew it. I knew Doc it. knew it. He's out of sync He's now. Usually. He's out of no, sync. But now. the Gore project, we, we, we hope to get the schematics uh, uh, submitted fairly soon, possibly within a month. Yeah. Great. Other than that, uh, great things. Uh, sure. uh, Dr. Manchin, I just had a question for, uh, for Jimmy on the, the Lost Creek. Um, uh, he was going to send me some updated. Uh, there was some discussion that t today about some parking. Uh, Jimmy, uh, we talked about that possibility of taking the fence down and some things at yeah, the basketball good. court. And, uh, I don't know if there's anything update, uh, uh, Michael. Uh, Jimmy, is, you want to address that? Well, we uh, definitely have plans for the, uh, the access road for drop-off to the elementary parents. We also have uh, ideas on the parking as well, up by the basketball court, and that will continue to develop as the project. The, the space is there. Uh, how that will look uh, as we go through the project uh, will, you know, and we'll I think that's to work a, on that. And, and Michael, I, I, and I know Jimmy and I talked about that. Uh, we may not have a specific, uh, we're working on it, but I think we recognize the necessity of parking. Uh, and, and, and in fact, Jimmy and I did talk about that today about how we're going to make that look, but we're, we are cognizant uh, of the need uh, for, for, um, for additional parking. So I, I think we'll, we'll be able to put something together here fairly soon. Uh, we are working with uh, Tom as, as we start some design, uh, particularly site work. So we're getting close. Well, we're going to have that, uh, we'll be able to address it. I think we talk anywhere from 25 to 50 additional parking spaces if we can find them, and I think we can. Uh, Sharon, you wanted to mention something on, on finance. You, oh, the refinancing uh, yeah, the agreement is deal. on the agenda tonight. But I have been working with the bank. We are going to try to close the end of the month. Um, going to be a significant savings. Uh, the loan will still last over uh, into FY34, which is the same as what the last loan is, so it's not being spread out any further. It'll be right where we were ending up. Um, but we will see significant savings, especially in interest, because the rate's going down to 2.65, and it was at 3.9, 3.7. So we'll see significant savings throughout that full. Okay. Well, there's a resolution on the agenda. Tonight. Did we not, did we not assign a number to that uh, over the period that was? Six hundred thousand. It was six hundred something, but I was it was six hundred some thousand in savings. In savings. In savings. In yes. savings. In interest over that. Uh, over that period of time, so it's it's significant. It's just, it's significant based on our discussion about refinancing. So uh, I appreciate that. 
It's not starting over. It's just basically Refin they're changing the interest rate. Yes. Well, right. yeah, by refinancing. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. It's not going to increase the life of the loan. No, no, no. It'll still stay the same. Yeah, tending at the same time. So it's just it's the same, the uh, lower same rate. parameters, so yeah. the, low, the lower rate is what we pay. And there is a resolution on tonight's agenda that the attorney has to be approved from that point on the contract. Uh, thank you, David. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and Kristen at attended, uh, was, or, uh, was that to UTC or, or online? And she's excited about Townsville, as she did. Actually, we met. Oh, we, the old you physically met? Yeah, we oh, physically wow. met. And um, really, uh, there wasn't too much. We had a very, very, we had a very successful graduation, drive through graduation there. Uh, as they said, probably more than before the COVID, actually. And, and it was quite a celebration. Um, the other thing that, you know, I'm, I'm really upset that I didn't bring it because I meant to, uh, to give actual numbers, but the enrollment has increased and I'm going to give you, it's, the numbers are right in there, but basically the enrollment is up to 460 and I wanted to make note on that, that like, uh, out of the, out of that, there's like 20 from Taylor County and 40 from Doddridge County and the rest are all Harrison County students out of that. Now, those numbers are not exact. I don't know why I forgot that. I had it sitting on my table since last Friday. Uh, but, but that's your range, and I just know that several board members were asking about the enrollment and how many from Harrison County. But it has increased. So a general observation would be like two, four, six, two, the enrollment is up to 460, with 20 being from Taylor and 60 from Doddridge. So obviously we are more than the majority there of students and I just wanted to make note of that. And I could give exact numbers at next meeting, at the next meeting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, that's, Mr. President, that's, that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Hogan. Okay, uh, at this time I'd like to say a couple things uh, and it's kind of on behalf of all the entire board that about six years ago, Dr. Manchin came to Harrison County and, you know, not really knowing what to expect, uh, you know, uh, what we was getting. Uh, he came and rolled up his sleeves and uh, went to work and he has worked diligently, very hard. Uh, he has worked, had a great staff that surrounds him. Nobody is successful unless they are surrounded by good people, okay? But there can only be one chief and a lot of braves. And Doc Manchin came in, made it known that he was the chief and everybody else, you know, was going to be the braves. And everybody working together, Harrison County would continue to move up the ranks and be recognized all over the state. And he has done just that. He has brought Harrison County from the middle of the pack to right up, if not the top, right at the top. And, you know, he has made Harrison County rock, okay? And now, unfortunately, Dr. Manchin's going to leave us, and he's going to go to Glenville State College, and we're just hoping that when he gets there that he will make Glenville State College rock as well as he did here in Harrison County. Well, so on behalf of the board, we would like to present him a little token of our appreciation. And Doc, you need to try it out. Because if you've, if you've ever been around this, this gentleman, he has a rocking chair in his office, one in the reception, and he sits in his chair here and he rocks. So on behalf of all of us, and yeah. I think my mother rocked me and just continually rocked me. And, uh, and to this day, I, I can't sit still, and that's just my nature. But yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. It means a lot to me. I'm not good at saying goodbye, so I'm not going to. And uh, I can say this. I'm overwhelmed to the limit of my overwhelming capacity. And uh, I've had a great run. One thing about the chair, these are chairs that are sold at uh, 
the tamarack. And one person has the, uh, the, I guess, the franchise or whatever for these chairs. We're very blessed that he lives in Doddridge County and so didn't have to drive clear to the tamarack to, to get a chair. Just go down to his shop and he has all kinds of them, different kinds, different ways. And so we picked out something that we thought Thank you. would. Thank you. Yeah. And so, rock on. Well, believe me, that will be uh, that will be utilized in uh, in Glenville. Uh, as I sit and have to make uh, probably a lot of decisions over the next several years, but uh, every time that I sit in that chair, I will think of you. So, thank and thank you for everything thank you've done. Thank you. All right, moving on. Next is our consent items. Is there a motion to approve the consent items as presented? So moved. Mr. Hammer has made a motion to approve. Mr. Doherty, you can second that motion because you were about to. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. New business. The 2020-2021 PERC contracts for Pam Hudson Pillar and Melody Waybright. Is there a motion to approve the PERC contracts as presented by the superintendent? Ms. Messenger has made the motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hogue has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Just the PERC is Parent Educational Resource Center. Yes, and we do a wonderful job with the two people that are to currently work. in this position. They do an excellent job. Outstanding. All right, if there's no further discussion, then we will take a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item B, Liberty, track, Liberty High School track repair. Is there a motion to approve the bid presented, the low bid presented by Anderson Excavating in the amount of $183,560 for the Liberty High School track repair as presented? So moved. Mr. Hogue has made the motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hamrick has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Just, yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm sorry, if you want to. No, I was just going to say those, that's the low bid and that's the, tab, the uh, tabulation, but I guess from, from Joe's standpoint or, or uh, Jimmy's, I mean, is that your recommendation for that bid? Because yeah. sometimes, yes, sometimes the low bid isn't always, it, yes. it may be a, a company you've worked with and don't have well, success. We have worked so. with these people, but they kind of highly recommended. Okay. So. I just want to make sure that the staff's comfortable. We're hoping that uh, they sound like they're Sometimes on these low bid ends up costing you more if you have to change well, the situation with that project that you know, we're looking at uh, removing that area that settled or sank, whatever you want to call it, uh, estimating about 2,000 cubic yards of material that come out of there, we could get it in there. Okay. So that's why you see on the tabulation the unit cost uh, per cubic yard per linear foot. That's what the electrical mm -hmm. lease used for. It's the only place on the track that we have all the electrical. understand everything you're saying and of course everything that you put into it I totally I mean it, that's your job but when I see bids like this and I see these people are from Morgantown and that bid compared to the Clarksburg bid I, I mean I just wonder sometimes like the mobilization is 6,500 from Morgantown 3,000 from Gatlinburg Kentucky and 10,000 and 18,000 and 29 or, or 18,000 locally. I just don't understand that. And and all I'm saying is, you know I'm a huge proponent that we use people in our own county. And, and, and I see when there's like $5,000, $7,000 difference and giving it to a whole other county to do the work, it, it always bothers me and it always sends me flags that I have to mention or I wouldn't be me. So, with that being said, um, I know we can't go back, but I know that you can choose others, and, and your call is the call, but I'm kind of like Gary on that on lowest bid thing. Sometimes it's not always the best thing. 
And I'm not talking hundreds of thousands. I'm talking when you're talking like ten, fifteen thousand dollar difference. I mean, I prefer to keep it in county. Okay. Are there any further comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Child nutrition tabulation for milk. Is there a motion to approve the bid from United Dairy for milk for Harrison County Schools in the amount of $281,326.35 as presented by the superintendent? Ms. Messenger has made the motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hamrick second. has second. Mr. Hamrick beat you. Mr. Hamrick has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Yes, same discussion. Mr. Dorico, is this the company that you're recommending? It is. It's someone you work with. My two cents in, um, you know, I've heard milk coming from China and imported milk and stuff. These are local farms. This is a local, like local milk, well, not imported milk. United Dairy has a location in Charleston and Martin Ferry, Ohio. I haven't worked with United Dairy for about three years, but when I was working with them real close, they were using uh, some farms in West Okay, that's just something that I think it think that we need to be proactive on, that on things like that. I remember seeing things like when you go to the store, get this brand. I just can't remember what the brand was because it's local farmers and not imported. So I had to ask that question, and to me, that's very important, not price. I mean, well, I mean both of these companies, all their milk coming from the United States. And again, it's going to come from a regional area. Yeah, I'm fine with that, just not coming from overseas and all that. Okay. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item D, resolution to refinance the energy lease purchase with Bank of America. And this is in your packet. This is the resolution in your packet. Is there a motion to approve the refinance resolution for the energy lease purchase with Bank of America as presented by the superintendent? So moved. Ms. Messenger has made a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Hamrick has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. This brings us down to personnel matters. Is there a motion to approve personnel matters on the agenda as recommended by the superintendent? Make a motion to sure. approve personnel. Mr. Ho, do you have a motion? Yeah, I have to. Mr. Hamrick has made a motion to approve. Mr. Doherty has seconded the motion. Mr. Oak has a recusal. A recusal, yeah. Uh, my uh, nephew has been hired to do summer work. Uh, it's listed as uh, Nicholas Ho. So I recuse myself from voting. How on earth did he do that? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Is there so? Is there a motion to approve, noting Mr. Hogue's recusal? Oh, yeah, we already yeah, have the motion. That's right. That's right. Okay. So noting Mr. Hogue's Mr. Hogue's recusal of his nephew, is there any discussion? Yes. What is a limited football trainer? A limited football trainer. Yeah, we have two on here. Limited. Mm -hmm. They're not fully certified, but we can hire them to be football trainers when we can't find someone else to do the job. They're hard to find. Yeah. And athletic trainers. I just have never seen that on our I haven't either. Limited. Yeah, limited football trainers. So that trainers. just means they're their credentials, credentials are limited, but they're yeah. full time. Yeah. It's, it's not, just to be sure, it's not an additional football trainer, right? No, no, it's the no. Full Okay, well, I thought like we were paying like the, a lot of the head coaches are also the athletic getting in. Strength coach. Strength D coach. Different than a trainer. What's the difference between a strength coach and a trainer? Well, the, tra the strength coach is one that works with them to get bigger and stronger and what have you. The limited trainer is one that's out of practice, going around to make sure that they don't aren't overcome by heat exhaustion and or if they get banged up or whatever. On a limited basis. Okay. Now, if it was something major, then they would be responsible to immediately call 
for an emergency car or something like that, rather than okay. try and do something. They can tape ankles. Tape like ankles, that. things like that there. Yeah. Okay, and another question, extended day resignation. What does that mean? I've had, there were several new things on here I had never seen. So, which one are you talking uh, about? It was like Is towards the time? end. Jeffrey Hanley, no relation. Uh, He was just I, I resigning from. from it's not, yeah, it's not a new job. It's a, a job that was already there, and they're just resigning from it. The extended day is an extra contract. Okay. Above and beyond their regular contract. Okay, and, and covered planning period. period. So we, I, I didn't think we were paying for covered. We do some. Very it's, limited. It's been some. cleaned up a lot. We've cleaned it up a lot, and we really look at every case when we have to trying to really reduce those because it, it comes and in Generally, there are shared the positions between the middle school and the high school, like Lincoln shares between the middle and the high. Sometimes mm -hmm. instead of adding a full teacher, we can cover a planning period, and then uh, they can teach another course. So, okay. But they I, I just knew that's something that we had been working on. Well, there's so. a process now in place that really comes from the principals and the superintendents have to sign off on it. So, okay. Yeah, they're very selective. We used to have pages full. Pages. I know. That's why when I saw it, I was like, I haven't seen it for a while. Yeah, you'll see it in a handful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we should, we should recognize one. Yeah. Recognize all the teachers that make this effort. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do. Mm -hmm. We do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there any further discussion in regard to the personnel agenda? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Personnel agenda has been passed. At this time, there is no further business. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Hogg has made the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Doherty has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion on adjournment? No discussion on adjournment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Michelle. Children of peace, go in peace. <laughs>